trust and believe that the Lord God Almighty has something in store awaiting for us today. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since we've had Bible studies. So what I'm going to do today is uh, go back a little bit and review a little bit to bring us up to speed where we are. I'm not going to assume that in, that in three weeks we remember exactly what we got taught. Uh, amen. That's how long it's been since we had Bible study. Amen. So let's do this. Let's open up with an opening word of prayer, yes, and then we'll move to our Q&A mm -hmm. session if there are any questions yes, to be answered. And if not, we'll go into our lesson. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now praying, God, that you would be uh, a faithful God to us. That God, even though we haven't been here, you've been yeah. here all the while waiting for us to return yeah. so that you may pour out into us what it is, God, that we need to know so that we may be the disciples and students that bring you glory, bring you honor, and bring you praise. Father God, we thank you for those persons who are here. Thank you for the traveling mercy. Thank you for the protective mercies. God, we pray for those persons who may be on their way. We pray for those persons, God, who want to be here but could not be here. And most importantly, God, we pray for those persons that you're sending our way to join us here at First Fellowship Charlotte. It's our prayer right now, God, that this Bible study session will be both informative and encouraging, empowering and equipping, so that, God, when we leave here, we leave here differently than we were when we got here. Father God, bless us, keep us, and never leave us. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. 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 So let me... Let me ask, are, are there any questions that we may have about anything that was preached about Sunday or another service or something that was said that we can clarify or help you with? Or if you're having a discussion or, or a dialogue with certain people that you that something has come up that you may want information on so that when you go back to that discussion and dialogue, we can give you uh, the information you need so that you can continue to have mm -hmm. such an awesome dialogue with the people that you're having with. Any questions? No, well, I think the last time I was here and you were preaching on Jonah, uh -huh. I remember I had a question, now I don't remember. But that's fine. <laughs> okay. I may remember next week and now. No, if you remember today, just stop me. It's okay. You're not going to throw me off. I doubt it is completely... So you, you, what you're about. You, 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 you'll be surprised how God will work that thing out. You'll be surprised. In fact, why don't, why don't, you, just, why don't you just ask it? And if it's off key, I'll say, well, you know what? Let me answer that after this or whatever. Just ask it. And then, okay. and, 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 and I'm trusting God enough that whatever the question is, that it works right into what we're going through anyway. So, amen. Praise God. So, we, we're, we're, we're going to go ahead and begin. Let me. We're at that part of the second creation story where we're now looking at the actual conduct, the actual actions that cause man to fall out of, of relationship with God. All right, and by man, I do not just mean men; I mean humanity. All right, uh, and you, this, the second creation story is about the fall of man, the depravity of man, the the, the, the sin that man has committed. So thus far, what we've gone through in, in the second creation story spans over Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3. The first part in Genesis chapter 2, we get the whole God creating man, creating woman, and the whole reason why he created man first, then woman, and, and, and the whole explanation that man should not live alone, but he should have a partner, a mate to live with that can engage him intellectually, emotionally, mentally, physically, and sexually uh, in all of those areas so that he would be complete just as each animal that God brought to him had a partner who was complete, all right? Mm -hmm. So we, we're, 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 we've moved through that part. Now we're at the part where we see exactly how uh, humanity fell from grace, how we lost our, uh, uh, and I'm going to say our immortality, uh, in our connection with God, our relationship with God because of sin. So, let me do this. Let me start by reading the first seven verses of Genesis chapter 3. I think it's important that we break them up because it's so terse, there's so much happening in these scriptures uh, that if we try to take it all at one time, we're going to miss something. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, the New Living Translation reads as follows. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? 
Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open. They suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Thus far the word mm -hmm. of God. Amen. One of the first things we want to look at, the, the, uh, uh, the first things that Genesis chapter 3 introduces us to is the serpent. Amen. Praise God. Um, let's start here and let's correct some some assumptions that we have made since we were children in Sunday school, okay? First and foremost, the serpent is merely a reptile. He's some kind of reptile. We're not told what kind of reptile he is, but we know he's a reptile. We also know at this point he has two legs, two hands. We don't know if he's walking upright, but he's at least walking so that his belly does not scrape the ground, all right? Remember, one of the consequences mm -hmm. of his disobedience mm -hmm. is he loses his arm and legs, and now he has to slip, mm -hmm. so now he becomes a snake. Mm -hmm. So the, the problem is, and, and when I was looking for images to go mm -hmm. along with this, everyone always draws a snake, but he's not a snake at first. Mm -hmm. he's, he, he's a, he, he becomes a snake at the end. He's a reptile of some sort. You can, whatever lizard that you don't like, put that image yeah. right there for you, okay? Uh, um, uh, 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 now, here's the second one. This is probably, I know, because I think I said this when we were going through before you weren't here. This is probably going to generate some, 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 some response from me, just to carry on. The serpent is not Satan. I know we Christians want to assume that he is Satan. You know what we do? We jump forward to Isaiah, where Isaiah says he sees a war occurring in heaven. He sees Lucifer and the, his army of angels fighting against God's army of angels led by Michael. And what happened, Michael and God's army of angels win. They cast Lucifer and his angels out. And, he, he, and, and Isaiah talks about seeing Lucifer fall like a comet to the, to the crashing to the earth. All right? The person then will jump from Isaiah all the way back to Genesis chapter 1 to that point where before God did anything, the world was formless, voidless, it was covered by water, and it was covered by dark. We call it the primordial uh, period. And claim that Satan has been on earth all this time waiting for God to do something with man. And then we come back and we say, okay, that serpent is Satan. That's a lot of theolo theolo theological juxtaposition to prove that. And here's the funny thing. It's so much juxtaposition that our Jewish and Muslim brothers and sisters look at us and say they are fools. Because for them, Satan is not the opposite equal counter to God. See, Christians, we treat, let me put my quarter here, we treat God as if he's the head on the on the quarter. Either the head side on the quarter. Well, okay, I guess they find the quarter quarter here. And we act like the tail side is Satan, that they're opposite equal. In other words, we, we take a comic book type uh, mentality. You got Superman versus Lex Luthor. Right. Batman versus the Joker. Mm -hmm. You know, all these characters, Wonder Woman versus Cheetah, all these characters have a per perfect opposite mirror of themselves. For as strong as Superman was, Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor was, uh, was uh, intelligent. Mm -hmm. His intelligence was superhuman. For as focus. On, just, uh, on justice as Batman was, the Joker was focused on criminality. Mm -hmm. As focused on uh, uh, being a bridge between uh, the Amazons mm -hmm. and, and humanity and being, uh, and, and being a model, Cheetah was. Cheetah, Cheetah was doing everything she could to not be a model citizen. 
that, that you got these perfect opposite equal. And we bring that into the church assuming that Satan is, is God's perfect opposite equal. This is why in, 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 the, in the Old Testament, God said, there is no other God but me. Mm -hmm. he, he, he wants his people to know that even, even though they have spiritual adversaries, mm -hmm. the spiritual adversaries are not on his level. He and he alone is God. And, even, and, and what Jews understood was that Lucifer, Satan, the devil, whatever you want to call him, could not operate, could not do anything to you until he got permission from God. That's why the story of Jonah reads like it does. That's why, uh, not Jonah, I'm sorry, uh, Job. Thank you. See, that's why I need you here, Sister Carol. You keep me on my feet. A -a Amen. It's, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Um, Job begins like it does. The devil, Lucifer, has to come to God and say, you know what, I can't attack him because you got your hands around him. In order, in order for me to attack him, you got to move your hands. Will you, are you scared that if you remove your hands, your, your servant will turn his back on you? That's basically what he's saying. And God says, okay, I'll pull my hands off him. You can do anything you want to. Just don't hurt him. And, and we see that permission time and time again. Even in, it's the same thing in the New Testament. When, when Lucifer comes and te tests Jesus. Notice the scripture reads, he doesn't just go. He doesn't show up on Jesus. The Spirit of God leads Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. So guess what? It ain't Lucifer that want to do this. God took grad Jesus and took him to a place, the wilderness where Satan could be found, so that Jesus could, so that he could subject Jesus to Lucifer's test. This, 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 and, and I'm, I'm, I'm hammering this uh, so that we will understand that the serpent is just a serpent. It's just an animal. Uh, you know, go ahead, <laughs> I told you. I was gonna say, who did you say the serpent was? So you're saying he was just a nobody? Yes, and I'm, I'm getting ready to explain why why I think he's just a nobody. Okay. So in other words, mankind fell to a nobody, and Satan didn't have anything to do with it, because as far as I know, it said the kingdom was transferred to Satan. That's Chris. That's Christological. Uh, interpretations of a Jewish, originally a Jewish scripture. The, the, the Jews... For, that's for, why I am a Christian. And you, you, are, you are a Christian. Mm -hmm. However, m much of your spiritual identity is inherited from our Jewish brothers and sisters. And what has happened over time, to make us look different, sound different, we've gone to certain streams to, to, to create, to re-enter, we call that isogenic. I suggest, I suggest, I suggest, Jesus, I suggest, Jesus. Well, you're reading into something what you wanted to say instead of reading out of it what it actually says. And, if you, if you, and, and, and the serpent ain't just anybody. So, I mean, he just, he, he's just not nobody. He is a somebody. And I'm going to deal with that in one second. But, uh, but here's the thing. The historically, theologically, uh, this scripture is not understood as God turning the keys of any kingdom over to, to Satan. Alright? In fact, what in fact what what I'm glad you said that. God doesn't give Satan the kingdom. Satan tries to steal God's kingdom. If we want to really look at it, Jesus says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't come to create. He doesn't come to he's coming trying to steal what God is doing. God has sent us from the beginning if you look at the story, uh, 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 the, the Jew story in the Old Testament and, and our story in the New Testament, from the beginning, God has wanted to establish his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. The Israelites were supposed to be a royal priesthood. You only have priests if you have someone for the priest to lead. You know, it, it, it's, it, it, you, you, you put priests in place because you want priests to help others get it right spiritually. God's initial plan was that he chose Israel to be his model so that all other people would come and be his people too. Mm -hmm. The problem is Israel kept falling short. They kept modeling the exact thing God didn't want them to model and they failed to be the royal priesthood so much so that Jesus has to come and now be the royal priest that, uh, and demonstrate the priesthood that Israel was originally supposed to demonstrate. Right, but there is a tremendous transaction that's taking place here. And right now, this is before the Israel's 
um, the, the, the Jewish the, people came into existence. Right, so right. This is all of humanity and this transaction. And you're the first time I ever heard it. I'm not disputing because you have doubt that I have nothing. But no, that's all right. I'm just saying from the time that there's other doctor people with their doctorates. Right. And, and I've never heard this before. But you're saying that mankind fell to just an ordinary serpent. No, no, wait, wait, wait. He, 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 he's, a, he's, a, he's an ordinary creature. However, like I say, give me what I'm getting ready to go right into answer your question. Get, get, let me let me let me go where I'm going, and you'll see what I'm saying. Say, say that, okay? Uh, all right. The serpent uh, again. It's not Lucifer. The, ser the serpent. I want to get here so you can see this. We, what we are told about the serpent is that he was craftier. He was more shrewder than any other animal God created. Mm -hmm. In other words, God created some shrewd animals. Mm -hmm. I, 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 get, I bet you if we go look in, if we were able to go back to creation, we'll see that uh, the, the serpent ain't the only one coming to mm -hmm. man and woman and telling them to do things. I'm sure there's some wolves there. Remember, Jesus talks about wolves and sheep's clothing. Well, you know, we, you've got other uh, animals that were crafty. You know, you got a hyena, which is typically represented craftiness. You've got all these other animals that are, are, are crafty, but none are more crafty, none are more shrewder than the serpent, all right? So he, it, it's, it, he's, in, he's just another creation. However, he's the shrewdest creation God created. All right. So they didn't just fall to anything. They fall to an intellectual. They they fell to an intellectual genius. Yeah, but he, this serpent obviously had an end game in mind, which is why he wanted to approach. He. You, you know, you know, you know what, my, what I think the end game is jealousy. I think it's jealousy because what we're gonna see. I think the only two beings in the garden that had immortality. At that point, are are the man and the woman mm -hmm. because they their punishment they lose that right. they, they they have they, they're not going to die. Mm -hmm. the, God doesn't pronounce that punishment on the serpent because I think the serpent was not created to live forever. It was created for a time. It, the, the animals were created for a time. All right. I think that the serpent is jealous of the relationship that God has with man and woman. Mm -hmm. And he wants the benefits of that relationship, the immortality, to be able to do whatever he wants to do, the, the, the abilities, the physical as well as the mental abilities. Because if he's walking on all four, that means he ain't walking on two, two legs. That means there's certain things he can't do. And he was not able to go into the middle of the garden. That, that's right. That's right. He couldn't, he couldn't proceed there. You know what I'm saying? He could. I really think it's jealousy. But I think what has happened over the years, because we want to, again, we want to be so Christological, we want to be so religious and so knowledgeable that we create doctrine that's not supported by the actual writing itself. That, that, again, I don't think, I don't think God would have let this be written uh, if God meant for this to be Satan and not his, we could say his name. Any place else, God says his name. He says, get behind me, devil. I know you, Lucifer. You know, if at one point, calls him by his name, his, his, his heavenly name, the morning star. You know, the, 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 the director of God, of heaven's choirs. Those are, those are titles that he held prior to being excommunicated from heaven. And so God, in any place else, has no great problem identifying Satan. All right? Here's another reason why I don't think it's Satan. Okay? Because if we put this on Satan, then what we are saying is God is incapable of handling Satan. Because you're making Satan co-equal in terms of power with God. So here it is. God created his Satan who has the power to go against it. And neither one of them really had the power to cancel out either, either one of them. And so, so when you... Could you rephrase that? Yeah, yeah, okay. If you say that Satan and God are co-equal, that means they're co-powerful, co-knowledgeable, co-present. One, one is not more powerful than the other. In fact, what they do, they, 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 they really, they can't overcome one another, all right? So when you say, if you were to say that this is Satan showing up in the garden 
to ruin God's creation. That God originally created, if you look at the story, created us to be in a place of perfection, a place of immortality, a place of naivety. That if you're saying the serpent is Satan, that all Satan had to do to destroy God's plan was to show up, convince them to do something they should not have done, and God's plan is, is completely annihilated. It's completely canceled. I know, but what you're really saying now, Satan is at least a general. Now he's saying that Buck Private came and annihilated God's plan too. So if someone even less qualified that you're saying took mankind down. No, no, you, you, I, I, I agree with you that someone lesser than God took man down. But as we're going to see, it ain't necessary that they took man down. It's because of what man wanted to do anyway. I know, but I'm saying he's the one who came up with the plan. Well, right, right, but, 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 but again, he didn't, it really, the serpent really didn't twist his arm. He really didn't take any action. He just put the idea in it, all right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so here it is. You ain't got to be a general to put an idea in someone's head. You just got to be persuasive. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying what you're saying we're saying Satan and God are equal. No, I'm but, not saying that. I'm not saying well, that. Well, well. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, saying, I'm saying, I'm saying if we go, if we say that the serpent is Satan, then we're saying that that God and Satan are evil, are, are, are equal. And I'm not saying that, they, that the serpent is Satan. I'm saying he's not Satan. And, he, and he's not Lucifer. He's not, he, he's not God's co-equal. In fact, uh, he, he is a jealous creation. That, that wanted to have the relationship that God initially gave to the man and the woman. He just, he's, he's another creation. Now, we don't know what exactly he is because guess what? They, they say he's a serpent. He's a reptile of some sort. You know, but, but again, we, he, I'm, I'm not, please don't walk away. I'm not saying they're co-equal. I'm saying, we, Pastor Al says, there is no God other than God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. All right? There is not any other God but him. The, the closest you will get me to say there's a, a co-equal God is a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's as close as close you're going to get me to say that God has some equals. Mm -hmm. Satan, Satan from the beginning is God's created being. Because he's an angel first. He lost his position as the first angel, the head angel, when he went against God. But he was a created being. This is why he needs to go to God to get permission to do things. Because he has no power. But he has the ability to persuade us to do things. In fact, in fact the, the Proverbs 18.21 or 20.18, the power of life and death is in the tongue, and those who love it will eat of his fruit. He, the, the power he has is that he is able to craft an argument that speaks exactly to what we want. Think of the last time you were tempted to do something and it wasn't something you wanted to do. How hard was it to say no to something you did not want to do? Not hard at all. But the temptation always comes when the enemy is tempting us to do something that we actually want to do. It is. You know, made the cake for uh, relatives coming in for the holiday. You know, told him, keep your paws off of it. And every time he come by the, in the kitchen, he looking at that cake. And he looking at you. And you, 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 you got your evil eye on him. You know, I told you to keep off that cake. The one time that you ain't paying attention, you ain't in the room, the enemy's going to come to him and say, she ain't gonna be that upset. Be. It's a little small sliver. It's 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 it's, it's you act like this is really happening. <laughs> he she ain't gonna be upset. And what happened? He goes right for it, gets a piece, and so happy, ready to risk life and death with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For it, it, and then and later gets in trouble because you're like, why did you touch that? I didn't want you to touch that. What? It's just one piece. Because he was tempted by something he wanted to do anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why I tell mm -hmm. say to people all the time. Uh, uh, the devil didn't make you cheat on your spouse. You, that's what you want to do anyway. The devil just put. The devil saw an opportune time where you were probably as more naked than you pretended to intended to be spiritually, right. mentally, emotionally, yeah. sexually. The opportunity was there. He 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 
let saw let you see the lineup mm -hmm. and then told you it's all right, you deserve this. No one's going to know. And here you jumped on it, you 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 engage in that adulterous relationship, and now afterwards, now it's everybody else's fault but yours. Guess what? He didn't he didn't he didn't wrap you up, tie you up, and then lay you in the bed and make the person get on top of you. You you went into that. Same thing when folks try to tell me, well, I didn't mean to steal. Yes, you did. Now I know you've got some things, and, and guess what? I know how Satan light that up. Money ain't coming in. You got this pressure, stress. But guess what? You you still had a chance to say, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to trust God to provide it, or I'm just going to take this and deal with what what causes may be. We we he's good at persuading us, but he has no power to actually make us do it. What he does, he sits around and watches. And he watches. And he says, okay, what's going to be this? What, what is that Sister Carol wants to do today? Oh, oh, she wants to rip and run today. All right. So guess what I'm going to tell her? Take that breathing thing off. <laughs> it's a nice day. See how nice it is? is, is see all that blue the sky is? That's nothing but air out there. Go rip and run all you want to. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes later, you on the ground. It ain't 15 minutes. It ain't five minutes, minutes later, you on the ground. I'll say two minutes later. Yeah. You're home and praying. Someone comes by with your air pad yeah. and put it back on. So, so I, 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 I say all that to say I, I knew that this was going to generate this. And I, I'm, I was prepared for it weeks ago. <laughs> uh, uh, but here, let's keep moving. We're told that the serpent is craftier than any other animal created. This means the serpent, the serpent wasn't the only animal that was crafty. He was the most crafty. See, one thing that we have to do better as Christians is read what's on the page. My mom was a teacher, and she, you know, we would always have uh, our work versus her homework from the teacher did her. Because many times she was teaching on the grade we were level we were in at elementary school. So we would do the homework, then we had to do her homework, and then we had to read. And she would make us read for about 30 to 45 minutes, seemed like forever. And so we would be reading, and we'll say something, and it, like the, the, the words would be, uh, like we are told about the serpent, what we're told about the serpent that he's craftier. We would say, we're, we're told the serpent is craftier. And mom would be like, no, that's not what's on the page. Read, stop, you, you, are, you have read ahead and you have digested. She said, what you're showing me, you got great reading comprehension because you've digested what you read, but you're not reading what's on the page. Read what's on the page. Many times we, we, we've heard this story so much, we don't think we need to read the scripture anymore. But when we don't read the scripture, we miss that God is making a comparative about this animal. That when you say something is better, most, worse, worst, you know, uh, not as, greater than, you're making a comparison. God is saying out of all the animals he created, this one right here was the most craftiest. All right? Uh, 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 again, there's other crafty animals that the man and woman have to deal with, but none were crafty. As a serpent, amen. Now, the interesting thing is that the word here to describe the serpent is actually the Aramaic word for snake. Okay? Pro again, the problem is we know a snake, but biologically, by definition, is a lizard that has no legs that slithers along the ground. We, there's a reason why the serpent is called a snake. Or the word that the Jews identified as serpent is snake in Aramaic uh, before it becomes a snake. All right. In fact, that word is nahash. Uh, it's, it's spelled N-A-C-H-A-S-H, -H, but it's pronounced nahash. Uh, the reason why that is, uh, 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 okay, yeah. With that, that by the time the end, is, it, we always say by the time the story ends, he is a snake. But here's the thing that we have to keep in mind: during this time, um, snakes are very prevalent image or imagery in Near Eastern reunion, in, in religions. Okay, we're told that he could speak uh, uh, and communicate the same language as man and woman. 
which indicates he's probably even more intelligent than other animals. We're not told any other animal can speak, but he can speak. Uh, amen. This is not unusual, an unusual feature that if you look at all the Near Eastern religions, uh, snakes play a, a major part. In fact, and for many Near Eastern religions, snakes are the gods. Mm. And that's mm. largely because these religions or, or built up in communities that live in desert areas or desert like areas. It was not uncommon that everywhere you went, you saw a snake. In fact, National Geographic, not National Geographic, uh, BBC America had this program, and, uh, and uh, they were showing this lizard, this this uh, lizard, uh, and how uh, its parents would lay eggs on this beach, and so uh, and they lay eggs on the beach because you know the water would come and keep the eggs moist and whatnot, and the lizard would hatch from there. But the lizards had to get from the beach back to the mount the mountains. Mm -hmm. So they had to cross this sandy area with some rocks. Well, come to find out that that area was called Snake Alley because there were so many snakes there because they would eat the baby lizards. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be waiting there. And so when the baby lizards would come out from under the sand and start running, you should see the snakes take off. Mm -hmm. and, and, and chasing these lizards, catching many of them while some get away. In my mind when I saw that, I said I should have recorded it, because that's probably what these desert areas looked like at some point. Like now it's rare to see a snake because guess what? There's so many of us and there's so many places where snakes are high, snakes mm -hmm. will, will they, they fight or flight. You know, they, they'll flee first before they fight. Mm -hmm. But then when here it is, there's really no place for them to go because it's this desert, mm -hmm. it probably was not uncommon to walk down the road and see a mm -hmm. snake coiled up on the ground or see a snake slithering across the ground. Mm -hmm. Snakes were so, they, they were so much around that is not surprising that they work their way into uh, into religion. And many times, when they work their way into religion, they were super intelligent. They could speak and they can do things. All right. So this is why I said, if you give me a chance, I will tell you why this serpent is in here. It, it's not he's he's an ordinary creation, but he's not Bubba Chuck. He he is because the, the these these people, these Israelites, are drawn from an Aramaic from a desert type people, they are infusing what they have come from into their religion, all right? Uh, again, remember, this story would have been told for thousands of years before it was ever written down on paper. This was an oral tradition. The only reason why that written down on paper is because the Jews thought the Babylonians and the Assyrians were gonna decimate them. And they understood that their religion, their religion is their history. And so they have written it down. This story has been retold and retold, redacted, changed, modified. Every time you added one word to one word out, that you told it, you changed the story. And so what we have is a finished form that has been handed down for, for hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, but what we do know is at that time, snakes were important. And it was not uncommon if you were to go live in antiquity to see images of snakes. Uh, to see people worshiping snakes. Uh, and so what the Jews do, the Jews take what people, everyone else was worshiping and then turn it around and make it the bad guy in the story and, and make God the good guy. That, that's the distinction, all right? Uh, uh, now, here's another thing. Uh, snakes in this region were also believed to be immortal creatures that possess spiritual, special characteristics not found in other animals. So this is why he can talk. This is why he can reason. This is why he's able to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the woman about what God did and did not say what God did and did not mean. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 there, again, therefore, the inclusion of a serpent slash snake in this Jewish creation story is unremarkable. It is nothing new. It's nothing special. It is par for the course in that region. We should not take anything away or assume anything simply because God, because God has allowed a snake or a serpent to be in this creation story. It's what they were doing. It's, it's like now, if we were to create a religion in, in, in modern day, we would probably use modern day imagery. It probably involved the internet. It probably involved digital 
uh, 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 equipment, iPads, iPods, it'll probably include cars and houses, all the symbols of things that we have today. If we were to create a religion today, it would reflect the, the environment we live in. That's what this did. It reflected the environment that the Jews were birthed out of and, and, they, and they lived in. Amen. Uh, again, that means we should not attribute any Christian pedagogical significance to the serpent. In other words, we who came thousands of years ago should not now want to perform a, a literary edit to, to Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3 and, a, and, and a put upon the serpent something more than its authors originally meant for him to be. This is why I say he's not Satan. Now, I know there are Christian preachers mm -hmm. that are going to argue this and going to argue with me all day long. That's fine. They argue with me until the sun goes down. It's it, it, it not going to change. Uh, he is good, good biblical analysis, good biblical stewardship, good theological criticism, good history, his, historical uh, analysis of the scripture would reveal that at no time prior to us Christians getting on the scene did anyone consider that snake, Lucifer. Mm. There's a, um, the Jews have been very meticulous in their interpretation of scripture, all right? That once a, 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 a Jew that was studying to be a rabbi became a rabbi, who was officially a rabbi, he, he and I will say he, because usually they have women back then, being a rabbi, but he and the women now, Every one of them are permitted to interpret scripture. But what they do, they don't usually jump out and say, okay, hey, I got this new interpretation you've never seen before. They rely on interpretations that have been passed down thousands of years. One thing about Jewish scriptures, once they were written, every word was given a number. Every At the end of the page, Another number was put at the end of the page to represent how many words should be on that page. And then every page had a number. So when we look at Jewish scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures, there's more reliability with their scriptures than it is the Christian scriptures because of the meticulous way that Jews kept the scriptures. Not only did they keep the scriptures, they kept what was called Midrash. This was rabbinic, rabbinic interpretation of scriptures. That there are some Jewish seminaries, some Jewish centers of learning, that with the right permission, you can go in and look through glass at original rabbinic interpretations of scriptures from thousands of years ago. Uh, they are protected, they're sealed, uh, uh, they are the, the original because of this, this holding of Midrash. So later rabbis could have a source to go look at how uh, uh, earlier rabbis, earlier teachers, earlier priests were interpreting scripture. And what we have seen in that scripture is that none of the early rabbis, early teachers, understood the serpent the way the Christians did. Mom? Go ahead. I know you're giving a lot of weight to um, what the Jewish um, rabbis Mm -hmm. they also don't believe that Jesus is the Christ. No, no, that's right, and you're actually right. However, remember, we're re we are studying a work that is uniquely Jewish. Mm -hmm. All right, We Christians have adopted it as part of our canon because Jesus refers many times back to Scripture, to particular Scripture. <clears throat> Not only does he do that, he says, I'm the fulfillment of the Scripture. So in other, in, other, in other words, to know what Jesus fulfilled, you need to know what the scripture say, says. And, and honestly, if, if we look at scripture, we can see God's handiwork. We can see God pointing to Jesus throughout the Old Testament. All right. Uh, so, yes, Jews don't believe what we believe in terms of our Christian application of the scripture. The scripture still, regardless of how, what we, what, how we want to say it or how what we believe, the scriptures still, though, are Jewish scriptures that we have adopted. And so if we're going to study them, what, what's the use of coming here and continuing to give you what we already are, what we already have, are saying as Christians? If I tell, because here's the thing. 
the conversation, I'm giving you this because the conversation that's going to mean the most is not the one we're having here. It's the one we're going to have out there with other people from other religions or non-religions who are going to use these scriptures and argue why persons should not believe in God like we do. And we ought to be able to, to, to uh, be able to sit down in this discussion and be able to talk competently in, in an informed manner about the scripture. You know, we, we don't... So let me give you an example. What is that talk about? Okay. I, I love football. I love football. I'm having a debate right now why or whether or not David Temper should have gotten rid of wow. Coach Rivera with four games. I don't think he should have. I think he should have waited. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a couple personal eyes, and they're like, well, we get a jump on interviewing new coaches. And I had to remind them that under the rules, both for the NCAA and the NFL, as long as the season is going on, you can't, you can't, inter interview, you can't interview anybody. So for the NFL, that's at least another four weeks before you can start interviewing. So you didn't get a jump on anybody. Because the official season doesn't end until the last weekend in December. All right? Now, most of uh, most teams, like the Carolina Panthers, are going to want a good, going to get good coaches. So, which means you're probably going to go want to look at a coach that's probably on a team that's still playing in the playoffs. Which means you probably won't be able to talk to them until the Super Bowl. At the, early, at, at the, at the earliest. You know? Same thing with the NCAA. The NCAA has even stricter rules about this. That if they are still playing, the teams are still playing, you cannot interview them for for, for, for coaches. Now, here's the thing. You ain't going to go to the NCAA and just get any coach. You want the best coach, coaches. So guess what? Those best coaches are playing in their conference championships to determine who goes to the balls. And not only who goes to the ball, but who's going to be in the national championship. So, so we're having this conversation. So we're going, people going back first and say, oh, I, I, I didn't realize that. Uh, we're going back. Mm -hmm. or, or, so someone jumps in. This would be like someone jumping in and saying, well, you know what? Why don't we just hire, hire Jimmy Johnson? First of all, Jimmy is retired. Jimmy doesn't want to, Jimmy's been retired for 25 years. <laughs> Jimmy is too old. He doesn't want to come do this anymore. You know, you jumped in, and everyone in the conversation like, that's not the conversation we have. Why did you jump in with that? And so what happens, you mentally say, okay, we're excluding this person over here because they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> All right? Christians don't realize how many times people do that to us because when we come in here with our Christian pedagogical views that are not substantiated or supported by the scripture that we, that we say they are. All right? Uh, uh, we 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 come to a conversation. Here's a, let me tell you. Here's, let me give you an example. We the, you know the scripture where Jesus says, "If there's anything you need, ask for it in my name, and I will go to the Father and make sure you have it." But we Christians so busy want stuff, and that ain't the word I want to use. We so busy <laughs> want stuff that we have taken that scripture out of its context. The context is if you're engaged in ministry, and there's something you need to perform ministry then you can ask Jesus for it in his name and he will go to the Father and make sure you have it. It's not a carte blanche blanket permission to just ask for anything. Because what I see is people doing this. In fact, because in fact Chris Rock made a joke out of this. He said, fellas, when we come across and one of our homeboys and he's got a nice woman or a nice wife, nice girlfriend, you know what we walk away and say, I want a woman just like her. In other words, we don't want you we want a woman that's like you, that has the same kind of mindset, same kind of gentleness, same kind of welcome spirit. He said, but let a sister walk up behind her girlfriends with a good man. She said, I want him. Mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, so, and, and I made that joke to say, mm -hmm. I've seen people, literally preachers, tell people, if there's something you want, walk up to it and, and lay your hands on the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> lay your hands on the name of Jesus, this is going to be mine. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and I tell people all the time. You are committing either battery or or or, or you're you are you're you're committing a battery if it's to a person or you're committing burglary if it's to a thing. Because guess what? When you walked up to that hundred thousand dollar Mercedes, you laid your hands on it, that Mercedes belonged to someone. And so guess what? You're claiming someone else's property. You didn't say in the name of Jesus I'm gonna have something like this. You said this is gonna be mine. I mean, 
I used to tease my sisters, especially when Dizel was a hot day. Ooh, I'm gonna have this, and they was gonna have this. This gonna be my man. No, you want a man like this. Sure. You don't want Denzel because you don't know what the problems that his wife has had to work through to get him to this point. He wasn't always this point. But but women are like, ooh, if I can just lay my hands on, I put a clear name Jesus. Yeah, you you coveting that woman's husband. And so say you want a man like Denzel. He has a strong sense of identity, strong confidence. And so I I I I say all that to say when we when we show up arguing scripture from that perspective, from what we've been wrongfully taught, the other people around the table say, okay, turn the mic down on them. They're not, they're not, isn't that, they're not good enough to be in this conversation. And then that's what happens. We don't get invited to the conversation because they know. We say sanctify, filled the Holy Ghost. They, they know we, uh, that, that we turn talking, mm -hmm. praise dancing, uh, 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 worships of God. You know, they, they know that. And that's not what they want. They want to have an uh, intellectual discussion about the scriptures, about its history, about its application, about its meaning. They want. They want, They don't want to know that. That guess what? Two minutes into your your discussion, you do you you talk about God, and all of a sudden you woo, woo, you all been all dancing and all that. And have a conversation. And so that's that. And that what I'm trying to give you is the information, so that if you ever get invited to that conversation, you can have the conversation. We run in different circles. You, you do, you do, but get, but get, but, but you, you do, but guess what? You don't know who's gonna move. You got houses all around your house. You don't know who's right now making a decision. We got to move because the job is sending us a square, or, or we're downsizing, or downsizing. Or we can't afford this anymore. And what, what if, what if the new neighbor come in is, is, is a Muslim neighbor, a good Muslim neighbor too, that just wants to engage you. And just it says, you know, I you he talks to Sean, his Sean testimony says, I, I believe you're a devout man of faith. I'm a devout man of faith. Let's talk. And here you are. So so yeah, so his first conversation is, I want to talk about Isaac and Ishmael. Yeah, you know Ishmael, that that, that he he saw that heifer, that that that, that, uh, that, that mistress. And, and what you done, you've already offended him. Because M Muslims believe that Ishmael is their progenitor. Because mm -hmm. when, when, when God says to, to, to Hagar, I'm going to bless your son too because he is the son of mm -hmm. Abraham. And he will have 12, 12, 12, 12 tribes. In fact, if you go look at the Quran, in the Quran, Hagar is the wife and Sarah is the Egyptian slave. Mm -hmm. So that turns the story on its head. So when we when we jump out there repeating our Christian pedagogical, because you know that that's how you have some folks preaching it from. You know, hey, Sarah was a wife, Hagar was a side piece. Mm -hmm. She's a chick on the side. Mm -hmm. So when so when you walk out of here with that kind of information in our head, and then when we have a conversation with someone, we don't know we've killed the conversation before we began because we're so busy repeating what someone said. Because guess what? We want to make Christianity. Go ahead, God. I, I know I know it's I know I know it's not your style. I, I, oh, I know it's not your style. Oh, for sure. I, I, I know I know it's not your style. I'm just giving this as an example. But, but you know, but 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 even even then, sometimes we, we may we may not. So so sometimes it's in our not knowing can be offensive. So. I saw something. I'm gonna tell you who has their scriptures down, though. And I wish that we as Christians did. Those Jehovah's oh, Witnesses. Witnesses. Yes, they do. I mean, they're not right, but they 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 know their scripture. They know their scripture until they run to someone they know that knows it. Who, who right. Christian who knows it too? Yeah. Because they they, they 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 when you sit down with them and you talk to them about the scripture about Christ being God's, mm -hmm. they don't they, they they stumble on that. Mm -hmm. They they know these other ones, but. Um, but you're right, they do know. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but they're willing to go out and proselytize and witness for their faith. Mm -hmm. I wish we would do that. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say, though, um, sometimes it's not because we are necessarily intending to be loud and, mm -hmm. and unknowledgeable. Sometimes it's just we may not know. Mm -hmm. So I recall uh, it, was, uh, it was some folks I knew, uh, this one sister worked 
down at the courthouse and she wore a hijab. I, I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And and another worker down there, I don't know why she put it out on social media. Mm -hmm. She said, well, if I got to comb my hair and do my hair to come to work, she should have to do it also. And what the person didn't know, so, you know, everyone jumped on the person. So several of us who knew said, do you understand what that signifies? It, it's, she's not wearing it like you wear a baseball cap because exactly. you don't want to do your hair. Mm -hmm. This is a religious thing for her. That, that in, in her religion, she believes the, the scripture that said that, that her scripture that says that her head must be covered uh, when she's outside her house for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I, 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 and I told her, I said, you jumped on her for her religion. So when she, when she saw it, and what we were, what all these other people were saying, mm -hmm. is that you are being cruel and being discriminatory to her because you're not honoring her religion. And so the woman was like, I didn't know that. I just thought mm -hmm. she was, it was a scar she put on her head and she just, mm -hmm. and I didn't think it was fair that I had to comb my hair. She, I said, that's her religion. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes not, simply not knowing mm -hmm. Can be offensive, you know what I'm saying, and and and, and, and especially in a in, in a society where it's so Judeo Christian, Christian, uh, it's so Christian based that many Christians don't make allowance for other people's way to we we say we're the home of the free, the land of the brave. We say that it, that people have the right to worship whoever they want to worship, but look at mainstream. American that American is Christian. We minimize any religion that's not Christian, and and we do that in such a way that we end up. I think we end up generating more harm than good, and we create barriers that keep persons from wanting to get to know us because of of what we know and what we don't know. So one of my duties as pastor teaching this to you is to make sure you understand it the way it was written. Now, after you, I've given it to you, if you want to go home and say, well, you know, I appreciate Pastor Al giving it to me, but that's Satan. That's you are fine. That's yeah. fine. But I, I, I don't want you to be someplace and you come out and say, Pastor, you never told me that people out here are, are, are thinking that the servant is not Satan. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, love. You, you had a question? You were raising yeah. your hand. Um, I guess I don't what I'm going to say. <laughs> but, um, It'll come back. It'll come back. It'll come back. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you... I, I do appreciate that, and I don't want you to think you're teaching something and by not saying whatever. Mm -hmm. right, right. When I ask you a question, I'm really trying to get an understanding. Standing. You may not come across that way. Right. And it's something Amen. I ask it because <clears throat> I do feel like we were taught all these decades so, amen. a certain yes. thing. So amen. Now we're introducing something different. Hey, amen. But mm -hmm. I, I do want to ask this question, though. Go ahead. Um, that's nothing to do with it. But sometimes with interpretation, and you're uh -huh. saying we Christians come and we change and say that's Satan. Does the Holy Spirit say that he will lead you into truth? That's right. And this way we look at certain scriptures that's right. from before, and now we look at it, and the Holy Spirit is enlightening us on certain things. And, 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 he, and he will. And he will enlighten us. He will give us revelation, discernment, understanding. If you ask him for it, he will. Mm -hmm. The problem I have is that many times we aren't, we haven't developed our relationship enough to even recognize when the Holy Spirit is speaking when he's not speaking. Mm -hmm. In fact, many of us don't even know what the voice of God sounds like. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, and I'm not trying to say I'm the authoritative mm -hmm. Scores what he sounds like because every day I grow with him, he reveals more of himself to 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 me. Mm -hmm. But I know what he doesn't sound like. Mm -hmm. so, so let me. So I was. We were. This is another conversation we're having. People. This conversation. How do you know what the voice of God sounds like? What if God tells you to do X, Y, and Z? Da, da, da. So I'm watching people talk, and so uh, there are sometimes God will tell you to do this. God will tell you to do this. I, I said, God would never tell you to sin in order. To, to, to serve his will. Mm -hmm. There's never a time, in other words, mm -hmm. okay, so let's, 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 let's go back to the example of adultery. But God wanted her to be loved. And no one would love her 
And so, when, as I got to know her, and I saw how lonely she was, and how much she didn't have anyone, and my wife got so much over here that this woman, and she has nothing over here, and so I thought God was telling me to give her a little attention that I give my wife, and so I slept with her. God would never tell you to commit a sin in order to fulfill his purpose. All right? Here's another one. We love the story of Robin Hood. The whole idea of robbing, stealing from the rich to give to the poor. Mm -hmm. Really, that really that story is a really is, it, it was really written as as a satire mm -hmm. on the burgeoning social social socialist movement in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's really what it is. It's a, it's a satire. The author is really writing that in a in a in a comical way or mm -hmm. a fun way to critique uh, the economic structure that was exist at that time, that, that the only people that had wealth typically were the kings and their dukes mm -hmm. and the royalty. Anybody else was scraping. Mm -hmm. All right. So we, so we love that. I hold that whole industry. Rob from still from the rich, give to the poor. Mm -hmm. But God is not going to tell you to go downtown to pit pocket Hugh McCall's checkbook. And on your way out the door, start writing checks. And you say, well, what's your name? You need $1,000 here. What's your name? You need $10,000 here. God ain't telling you to go steal and, and, and by false pretenses, bless people like that. That's a sin. And so the problem is because we haven't spent time enough with God, we don't recognize the other voices that are telling us to do all these things that are not of God. If so, so again, I want to know the voice. I want to hear this voice. Some of these uh, prosperity preachers. I want to hear that voice that's telling you to preach this. Because when I read the Bible, I don't see, pros I don't see the focus on prosperity. I see the focus on God coming to the aid of people who are in storms, who are dealing with difficulty, and meeting them where they are to help them get better where they are so they may in turn help someone else. I want to hear that voice that's telling you to go in there and to preach that God doesn't want you poor, that God wants you rich, and all this. I want to hear it. Same thing, the name of claimant. I want to hear that voice. Because I'm almost willing to bet you that's not God's voice. Again, I ain't heard it because guess what? That voice don't speak to me. I think it don't speak to me because they know I ain't going to get nowhere with me. You know, uh, the word says if you resist it, that will, he will flee from you. So guess what? There's certain things he know he just can't come talk to me about. You know what I'm saying? Because he just it, it just ain't gonna work, all right? But I wanna I I want somebody to record these voices and bring them to me so I can hear what some of these voices what they sound like. Because I'm not convinced that some of these voices here's another. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I shall repay. You know why God says that? Because he knows we'll take it too far. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You can see, because I love you, Carol. You're one of my special ones. And if anyone harms a hair on your head, they got to die. Mm -hmm. So here it is. They could have just bumped you yeah. in the supermarket. Right, right, right. Not that plug out the end of your right. breathing right. machine. Right. Right. What happens, you're trying to get, you can't bend over, right. and no one, and so we finally get it plugged back up. Right. Right. But for that little, however many you suffer, that, that, they got to die. <laughs> no, no, no not, not a punch in the face, mm -hmm. not push to the ground, they got to die. This is why God comes up with the eye for eye. People don't even understand what that is. They, they think that is God saying, no, you go get them. No, that's God limiting you what you can do. Because he knew that if, because we love you, if someone put out your eye, they're going to die. So the most we can do to them for her, taking your eye is take one of their eyes. If they took a tooth, you take a tooth. And but, So God was saying, I can't let y'all uh, have vengeance because you don't know when to stop. So God ultimately says, I don't even want you to do an eye for eye. Yeah. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I shall repay. That's why when, when Peter and them come to Jesus talking about, you know, do you want us to get them? He said, no, I want you to pray for them. <laughs> pray, I, I want you to pray for those who despitefully use you. Sure, sure. Because here's the thing. The hell that God will put them through mm -hmm. is worse than anything that we can create. Yeah. All we can do is hurt the body. Mm -hmm. We have no power over the spirit. But God has a hell that not only destroys the body, but torments the spirits forever. And, 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 but again, if we don't know 
the word, we in a relationship, we don't we can't hear what, what God's speaking the Holy Spirit. And when we hear this, some other voice can be talking saying, you know what? This is just your justification. You're going right on down the road. And you go down to Mr. Jim house, as soon as he opened the door, you smack the mess out of him with your tennis racket. <laughs> That'll teach him for rolling your, his eyes at you going driving down the road. We, we don't know, we don't, we don't know the voice of God. And, and I, 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 and I say this, I'm of the belief that many times what we think the voice of God is not. Because many times what we think God is telling us to do, I don't think God really wants us to do that. God's a God of love, first and foremost. So if it ain't love, if you cannot point me back to love, and so for my adulterers, no, that ain't love. Uh, 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 but God's a God of love. Here's another thing. The word says he's a God of order. We went to that scripture last night. The first part of that second part, I don't know quite quite about. He's not a, he's not a God of confusion. He's a God of order. So guess what? God, if he's a God of order, not a confusion, you can't tell me confusion. He's, he's in the confusion. Now, he may have allowed the confusion to arise in your life so that you can recognize the difference between order and confusion. But God himself is not in the confusion. He allowed the confusion to arise. You know, if God, God, Jesus sitting on, on the boat when the storm was summering, arose. He knew the storm was going to rise. Yeah. <laughs> but he wasn't in the storm, he was on the boat. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he speaks to the storm, and the storm listens. Mm -hmm. But the storm itself is different. He, that's not him wanting to hurt them or hurt, harm them. That's the tool, the confusion he created. Order is down below the boat. And the funny thing, it took them all night long to recognize and go down there and tap order on the shoulder and say, can you just speak and, order, and so we can have some order up here? So I say that to you to say, uh, uh, yes, the Holy Spirit should and does guide us in everything we do. Everything we do. The problem is we don't know what the Holy Spirit sounds like many times. And you'd be surprised how many people come to me and say, how do I know what God's talking to me? Well, when you read the word, God didn't tell you that. But how many of us read the word? The average person doesn't read. Oh, well, let's read the word. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so unusual. I go places, I sit down with my book, and people are like, oh, you're reading. Mm -hmm. I mean, can they get, this is how much people don't read. There are companies that are making billions of dollars of having people, actors, read books, playing the parts in the books, mm -hmm. so people don't have to read the book, they can listen to it. It's called audiobooks. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a company called audiobooks, but there are different companies that do them. They're audiobooks. Nothing new. Mm -hmm. they, they really were made for people who couldn't see or had some kind of physical, or, or, mm -hmm. or you know, but people, we're now getting them. We, we don't even try to read the book. Mm -hmm. we, and, and, I, and, I, and I tell people, it's wonderful to hear the actors play the part, but in my mind, when I'm reading a story, the, the character has a certain sound in voice, a tone. He has a certain image. I'm creating that in my mind. Yeah. All right? So, if a person ain't reading the books that you will want to read, how much are they reading the Word of God? They're not reading it. They're not reading it at all. In fact, many times, in fact, when I, when I speak about this on Sunday, anytime I talk about moving y'all past an hour worth of Christian and an hour worth of worship service, y'all should see your body language. It's almost like, please. you got two hours. You, you, you got this hour here this morning, I'm going to give you one of them. Either Bible study or Sunday school. I ain't going to give you both. You know, get, get mad. If I tell you to spend 15 minutes praying, oh my God, Pastor, you don't know. What I can do in that 15 minutes, I can get my children's clothes out, get it ironed, get their lunch made, get all this done, and, 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 and be good. That 15 minutes, yeah, is that valuable? That if you spend 15 minutes, God can work out the rest of your day. Here's another one. You know what? Uh, why don't we stop paying an offering and pay a tithe first? You know? What? Stop paying an offering first and pay a tithe. In other words, okay, right now. it, it uh, Many people, so let me give you an example. I was at one church, and I happened to be sitting with some folks, and the folks I knew wanted you to know what they had, how much they had, okay? 
And so, all the time, what kind of car they drove, what kind of clothes they wear, all of this. And so we sitting there, we're talking, we're just talking, we're getting our tied arm and chest together. Yeah. And the same people, because you can see, I, you know, I, I, I'm a student, I watch everybody, right, right, I may right, not right. let you know. Right, right. So I'm watching them write, so they fill it out to $20, and on the four line, it said offer. Not offer, it said tie. Now, if they had said offering, I wouldn't. Right, 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 right. I understand. But you put tie down. So, if I understand tithing correctly, <laughs> if that's 10% of what you made this week, you're saying you only made $200. Which then means that you're living a life you cannot live because somehow or another you're getting this stuff, not, able, not having the money to afford what you're, what, you, what you're saying you have. So one day, I said, I have a session. I said, you don't mind me. Yeah, because you, you got to. I said, I'm not trying. I said, let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I see you write that $20 check. I see you write it tight. Is that your top? Is that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, should that be your offering? No, that's my top. Mm -hmm. And so we went through, and, and I really had to teach the person mm -hmm. that really what you're doing, you're giving an offering instead of a tie. Mm -hmm. I, I, can I tell him, I said, 10% of your gross, at least 10% of your gross, God is asking for that back. Mm -hmm. He's not asking for it back because he just needs it. This is a test to see if you're going to put your money before him. Mm -hmm. And what he wants to show you that he can do more with what's left over than you can with all of it. Mm -hmm. And so what persons were telling you, like, well, no, I, they never told me that I needed to give a tenth. They told me to give whatever I want to. So I always yeah. gave 20. I said, so what you, I said, but what you're doing, you're giving an offering. And so here's the thing. If you read Malachi chapter 3, it talks about a tithe first, right. and then an offering. Yes. All right, it's what we miss. It is, will, 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 will a man rob me? How do we rob you? In the tithes and the offering. All right, and then he goes in and says uh, that we don't give a tenth to him. But then the scripture says the tithe breaks the curse. Because if you don't tithe, you, you, God, God curses you. But what unleashes a blessing is in the free will offering that comes after it. It's what you do above your tithe that unlocks a blessing. Mm -hmm. And many of us don't understand mm -hmm. that reason why we are we are just maintaining is because all we've done is maintain and turn in terms of our tithe. Mm -hmm. we, we, we either give it just an offering or we just give a tithe. We don't give the free will offering uh, above that to unlock the blessing. God wants, when, when you get that free will, God is saying, okay, you really do love me. That you're going to give me more than I asked yes. for. So let me give you back more. I have a question to ask. Go, go ahead, love. So when you say an offering, does it have to be to the church? Or could it be to other... Um... Well, uh, you, you know... I'm you know, just asking. You know, you know what? Um, I don't see God speaking about us giving to anyone else. I, I, I see God speaking sure. about us giving to His church. And so when... When I speak about offering, I'm speaking about that which we give to the church. Now, mm -hmm. here's the thing. Your offering, your tithe, sometimes is not always your, 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 your financial money. It's not always your money. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of uh, offering, your tithing, your time, your talent, your, your tithe? Mm -hmm. All right, so, so guess what? Many persons that can tithe do tithe, and that's all they do. But they won't come back, they won't give any time, and they won't share their talents. All right? So sometimes, for what God wants us to do, sometimes it is giving your financial time, mm -hmm. and then your offering taking the form of talent or time. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this yesterday. You know, for some people, it ain't just your money that we need, it's your ability. This past Sunday, I learned that someone has been sitting here... Sunday after Sunday, revival after revival, watching me run back and forth to that room actually knows how to do it. And for, I'm going, we will be entering my third year beginning January. So for two years, you have sat here and watched me run back and forth and you didn't do it. But for some reason, you got frustrated this Sunday and you wanted to get up and go back and actually and actually get it done. It, what? That's your time. That's your talent. 
And I've been asking, begging my leaders, I need help with this. Who all can do it, can come do it, please come do it. And you have sat there, sound as a rock, like a bump on a wall, not doing anything. But this past Sunday, you showed me that you know how to do that. So guess what? Since you know how to do it, guess, guess what? Guess what I'm adding to the, to the, to the schedule to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know. But, but here's the thing. And, and I get that we're a small church, which means that many times we're doing more than we should. But we're still the church. And guess what? You assume... You, when you were invited to become a church leader, you had a chance to say, "No, this is going to be more than what I want to do." I don't. Want, you took. You assumed the leadership title, so now fulfill the leader, the duties that come along with that title. And so now that I know that you can do it, I will have you now to do it. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 but so, mm -hmm. but but the, go back to your original question. When I talk to the offering, I'm just talking to church. I don't. You know, I don't care what someone else, some other entity, your membership dues, your offering, whatever, that's them. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like, like I'm, I'm mm -hmm. that. We have membership, yearly, annual membership dues, the national, oh, state, yeah. and local. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, we, oh, we have church, you say the church does? No, 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 I'm in a mega. I'm, I'm, I'm in oh, my return. Oh, 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 I have okay, national, okay. state, local oh, dues. Oh, I see, I so see. we got to pay those. Okay. But when I talk about offering, I'm not talking about their, their, their dues. I'm not talking about yeah, their dues at all. I'm talking about, like, um, we support, like, St. Jude, mm -hmm. and our daily bread, and world vision. And, 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 and those are good things to support, but those are gifts. Those, 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 those are gifts. <laughs> yeah. gifts. And like you said, and, and to the government, they're yeah, tax right, right. They're gifts. Uh, now, now what, they, they, what they do, St. Jude's and daily bread, they use terminologies that Christians will be familiar with to make you more... Uh, entice you more to give. So if St. Jude says your offering of $19.99 a month will help us reach this person, in your mind you're saying, ooh, I'm giving, making a sacrifice, giving an No, you're giving a gift. You're really giving a pledge. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, but, but again, they, yeah, your, your offering is to the church, to, to God. Now, now you, and for some of us, we may be sacrificing to do that. And we may, we may be hearing God say, you know, you had the ability to help. And that's fine. But the offering is what you bring here. The tithe mm -hmm. offering is what you bring here. Amen. 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 I don't took some extra time for this. Oh, man. So, she wins. So, so, so this is what we do. We're going to pause right here. And we will pick up here uh, next week. Amen. Lord willing, the creek don't rise. We'll be here next week. Amen. I was gonna say I enjoy you. If I didn't, I wouldn't come. Amen. Oh, I enjoy you too. Oh, I, 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 I enjoy you too. Amen. Please don't think. Please don't think you're not. You, you offended me. You're not offended. No, I hope not. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. So it's, it's, it's not. It's not. So the way it may seem like. No, but, but, but I'm not taking it that way. Hear what I'm saying. I'm not even taking it that way. Here's. So let me say this. This, this is about us as black people. We, and I'm not saying that you, but the same generically mm -hmm. of what I see. Problem, one of our biggest problems in, in our, in our, among our own people. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to discuss or to dialogue. Mm -hmm. Too many times we come to the table with the intent to win the discussion instead of to have your own understanding expanded. Mm -hmm. And so when what happens when when you are going at someone. And you're trying to win, it seems personal. And so what happened, people start responding personally. And now we think you're attacking. But really you're trying to just win. True discussion and dialogue is that we both come to the table with our ideas, but we walk away with either our ideas being challenged or being added to by the conversation. Okay? That's how I come to this. I I don't believe I'm just a teacher. You're a teacher too. Because you're teaching me as we're interacting about certain things. <clears throat> and my thought is, I want to make you more, more better. I want you to make me more better. So I don't walk away from him like, how oh, dare she challenge me and type, take me. Nah, uh, uh, nah, I don't, I don't take that at all. Because I never thought about trying to win anything. Right. I asked to play, I knew you got to go. No, 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 someone's crawling up my arm. I was like, ooh, boy. Because, like you say, I'm trying to get 
a better understanding Amen. Right. A of Amen. what you're saying. So Amen. certain things can be mine, so I want to say in this case, in this case, in this case. Amen. So that's a long time. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You are you are not offending me, you're not bothering me. <clears throat> as I tell Sister Ramona mm -hmm. when Brother Charlton was teasing me about my lasagna. I said, that didn't bother me. I said, I said <laughs> Several people tease me. I say, well, me and them all teases me about my lasagna. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not, I, I, that doesn't bother me. I, I, it's, I'm, I'm, I got thicker skin than that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and again, we come here for a discussion. This is Bible study. This is a place, again, this is a place where we should be able to ask a question. Because you really can't ask it when I'm preaching. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm trying to get to a point, and, and I don't want to be distracted, distracted yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, it, uh, the, the, you know, my, the, my, my mother, my mother in law are amazed. You don't use your thoughts. I say, yeah, I said, but you should be inside my mind. But okay, don't forget this. Don't forget yeah, this. Right. Don't forget yeah, this. Right. Don't forget this. Yeah. Say this. Say yeah, this. Right. Don't forget this. <laughs> you know, how are you going to handle this? Uh oh. They're right. looking like, you know, no, 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 talk about it. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. You know, it, 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 it's so. Uh, but here, where we can slow down and we can ask the questions and we can have the discussion, this is where we need to have it. Same thing with Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Sunday school. They tend to kick me out of Sunday school, but they don't want me in there. They want me to be ready for church. Yeah, and I understand. <laughs> Ready to preach, uh, but amen, amen. Prayer, any prayer requests? You're usually one of them, but you're here, so we're gonna keep all praying. We're gonna keep, yeah, yes, oh, yes, oh. Your husband is faithful about making sure we pray for you. He is faithful. Amen. I, I, I tell people there's there's telltale signs, signs you know when someone loves you. If someone's not afraid to put you on the altar before God, that's a sign they love you. You know, they they can take you to the Bahamas, buy you anything. But again, if they if they won't put you on the altar, that's saying that's saying a lot mm -hmm. about who how they feel about you. Mm -hmm. So he, a, a, amen. Uh we're gonna pray for Nancy Deadman and Trenton Howard. Please do that. Thank you. A, amen. Hey, a, thank a, you. A, amen. Yes. Amen. Let's pray for First Fellowship amen. Charlotte. Yes. Let's pray for anybody in <laughs> churches, uh, especially folks who are watching us on Amen. Facebook, for their leadership, for their church that they were able to serve. Let's pray for persons that are going to come to know God Amen. this week. And let's pray that they would know God in a powerful way, that they will give themselves to God. Let's pray for persons that are looking for churches that will come here, find what they need at First Amen. Fellowship, and decide to plant themselves right here. Uh, and let's just pray for our community, our state, our country in general, because things are just happening, just all kind of stuff. Yes. So here, let's go ahead. Pray for you. We all oh. yeah. Well, amen. Praise God. Yes. Oh, pray that that, that that must be what that must be what keeps me from getting discouraged sometimes. <laughs> and, and your prayers are working because they, 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 sometimes I go in that office, close the door, and they're like, get out, leave me alone. Give me thirty minutes. Leave me alone. Don't say anything to me. You know what I'm saying? So, but pray, praise God. I always covet your prayers. Uh, amen for both myself and my family. Amen. Um, it is a, you know, my parents used to say to me, you don't know how much work it is to raise a family until you have to raise your own. And there's so many moving parts, especially with different age children with different rights. And, and it, it, it's amazing. It's amazing that any couple is able to get it done, but I, I covet your prayers uh, because, yeah, because I have a, a something that most people don't have. I have to care for other people when most people only have to care for their. And so what happens, the value judgments that have to be made. And sometimes in making the value judgments, sometimes persons get offended, both on my personal side and the church side. And as one person had to say, some folks have to realize on the personal side that you're doing this so that you can support them. Mm -hmm. You know, that as this grows, hopefully the giving grows, and from the giving, my salary will go up so we can support them. But at the same time, you know, these persons over here have to understand, okay, you can't have all my time because that time goes in. So it's really a balance cat, and to know that someone is praying for you and with you and praying for your family, it is... Uh, such wonderful uh, uh, news receiving. So it makes my day. Amen. amen. You're going to justify me having my uh, my General Souls chicken today. I'm, I feel good. I feel that God wants me to. 
I, I feel God wants me to have my Chinese chicken. See, this Holy Spirit talking right now. Uh, I, I, I'm sure God said, that ain't, your, that ain't me talking, that's your stomach talking. Amen. Praise God. So here, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now, God, praying, God, and, and, and praising you, God. For God, your faithfulness, God, your love, your kindness, your grace, your mercy, God, your forgiveness, God. Just for you being an awesome God, God, you created this space and this day for us to come here and to discuss your word and how, God, we're to understand it and how, God, we're to chew on it and to manage it. And, God, we pray that as we are chewing on it and thinking about it and reflecting on it and meditating on it, that, God, your Holy Spirit will speak clearly to us, God. And, and allow us, God, to gain from it what we need to know, God. That, God, we would recognize that, God, how easy it is for us to be tempted and persuaded to go away from what your will is. That, God, that we would know that there are uh, entities and persons out here that, God, want to see us fall. That, God, we would know, God, that even in the midst of us, you give us an escape route from our temptations, God. Father God, we pray right now that you will strengthen us in any place we're weak. God, the enemy attacks, not in our strong places, but in our weak places. So strengthen us, God, right now so that, God, when the enemy comes, we may be able to respond to him like Jesus responded to him. That we may hit him with scripture all upside his head so that, God, he leads us, he flees, and he, and he goes on about his, his business. Father God, we pray that you bless us and keep us. We pray for those names lifted up, God, those persons lifted up. We pray, God, that you watch over us and keep us. And we return again here Saturday afternoon for leadership development and Sunday morning for worship service. Father God, is in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, magnificent name. And we do pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to turn you, off the...